Hey guys, in this video, we are going to learn about solving quadratics by square roots. So we solve a specific set of quadratic equations by square roots. The specific type of quadratic equations that we can solve by square root are quadratics of the form ax squared plus c. Those are the ones that have no bx terms. So those can be solved using square roots. Now, it doesn't mean this is the only method. For some, it may be. Um, factoring could also work, and you're going to see that on some of these examples. But you will see, um, you'll see a situation where solving by square roots is really probably the only option. So here's uh, the steps. First, you want to isolate the x squared. Then you want to take the square root of both sides. And remember that a positive number always has two square roots the positive root and the negative root. So here's a very basic example. Now we could take this one and solve it by factoring as many of you have done before. x plus seven, x minus seven, and set that equal to zero for answers of negative seven and seven. But to solve by square roots, which is just another method for solving the same question, we're gonna first isolate x squared by adding 49 to both sides. Then we'll take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to plus or minus 7. Now the reason why in this particular case I prefer solving by factoring is that I won't forget that there are two answers, the negative 7 and the positive 7, because you see them coming right off the factors. It's very common for people to forget the plus or minus on this answer. You just say square root of 49, oh, 7. But technically, if x is being squared and you're getting 49, 7 will get you a 49, but negative 7 squared will also get you a 49. So two routes to get you to the same answer. In this route, I solved by factoring, and in this route, I solved by square roots. So go ahead and try numbers 1 through 6 quickly in your notes, and I'm going to go ahead and do uh, numbers 8, 9, and 10. So for number 8, we're going to isolate the x squared by multiplying by the reciprocal on both sides. Now this would be a situation where solving by square roots might be better than factoring because of the 3 fourths in front of the x squared. And it is um, just an x squared and a constant term. It does have no bx term. Okay. So I multiply by 4 thirds on both sides, that gets me x squared is equal to, and let's multiply over here by 4 thirds, reduce to 1, reduce to 16, and 16 times 4, which makes 64. And then we know that our answers, take the square root on both sides, is going to be x equals plus or minus 8. For number 9, um, you could factor if you wanted to take out the 3 and that gets you x squared minus what does that give me minus 36 that's equal to 0 and we could do this one by factoring so see this is one of those scenarios where it's like okay you know if i wanted to solve by square roots i'd just be adding 108 to one both sides and then dividing by 3 on both sides and then i get x squared is equal to 36 which is going to give me plus or minus 6, just like this one's going to give me. So it's there's no benefit here to solving by square root. Like there was here, there was a little more of a benefit because of the 3 fourths in front of the x squared. So you're going to see me start to kind of analyze the difference on when should I be using square roots versus when should I just be factoring. So let's take a look at number 12. If I subtract 3, so here I've got a quadratic, obviously, because it's an x squared and it's got the ax squared term and no bx's. You can see the constants here and no bx's. So, um, you know, this one doesn't really look too pretty for factoring, so it looks like maybe using, we could try using square roots, and the way, again, you should be thinking about using square roots is isolating. Try and see if you can isolate that x squared, which we can. So let's subtract a three. You can always isolate the x squared here. Subtract the three, so one half x squared is equal to 72 and multiply by 2 over 1, or by 2 on both sides, to get us to give us that x squared is equal to 144. And you should see by now that your answers here 
are plus or minus 12 because you're taking the square root on both sides. If we take a look at number 14, again, we just have an x squared and the rest is plain numbers. So we're going to try isolating um, the x squared and using square roots. So subtract 10 on both sides. So 25x squared is equal to 36. Divide 25 on both sides. And we don't want to divide this. We want to just leave it as 36 over 25. If we take the square root on both sides, you get that x is equal to positive or negative 6 over 5. Because the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 25 is 5. So you can use examples 12 and 14, uh, 12 and 14 to try 11 and 13 now in your notes. And I want to talk to you a little bit about irrational solutions. So zeros or roots or x-intercepts can be irrational. What that means is um, irrational numbers are numbers like the square root of 5, which comes out to be a decimal that goes on forever, or a square root of 17 or square root of 18. Basically, irrational numbers are square roots of non-perfects. So, for example, when we got the square root of 144 up here, we were able to say plus or minus 12. Or when we got the square root of 36 over 25, we were able to say plus or minus 6 fifths, right? But sometimes you're going to have non-perfect numbers inside. Oops. Let me get my pointer here. Non-perfects inside the square root. So what do we do with that? Nothing. That's just those zeros that come out as decimals. So when you go on Desmos and you touch the zero and it's not like something pretty like 0.5 or 7, it's an irrational zero. It's still a root, but it's, it's sitting on, on a really big decimal, um, really long decimal. So for example... Um, this would be a great scenario where we need to use square roots, x squared minus 3. We have to use square roots because it's not a difference of squares, even though it looks like 1. 3 is not a perfect square. So technically, you can't factor this. So factoring, not an option here. We have to use square roots. So we add 3 to both sides and take the square root. And you get that x is equal to plus or minus square root of 3. And if we actually found square root of 3 in the calculator and approximated it, let me be rounded it off to like the nearest hundredths or so, and then we would graph that parabola, the zeros would be at those decimal values. Let's try another one. Here on 19, let's isolate x squared. I get that x squared is equal to 56 minus 8, which is 48. I will take the square root on both sides, and I'm going to leave it as x is equal to plus or minus. Oh, hold on. So I'm going to take the square root. Yeah, let me, let me stop right here. I'm going to take the square root on both sides, and I got x squared is equal to um, 48, or x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 48, but this can be simplified. So we're gonna simplify this radical. And how do I know it's gotta be simplified? Because it's got a perfect number, so four, nine, 16. Remember those perfect numbers? It's got a perfect number that it is divisible by. So 48 is four times what, one, Two, okay, four. Oh, we can do another. It's got another perfect number here. Four and three. I think 48 is divisible by 16, guys. So let's try that. 48 is divisible by 16 and three. So the square root of 16 is four left over with square root of three. Do we remember simplifying radicals? Because we did this last semester where we took square root of 48 and broke it down by perfect and non-perfect, and then the perfect was able to come out. Square root of 16 is four, square root of three, plus or minus on the outside. So x equals plus or minus four radical 13. Let's try another one. 
So we could take out our GCF if we want, but it's really not going to help us out. I mean, let's try it to take out the 2 that gives us x squared minus 63. And that's not factorable. So let's put that 2 right back and start over again. Let's isolate x squared and use square roots. We're going to use solve by square root. Okay, so add 126 to both sides. Divide by 2, there's that 63 again. So x squared is equal to 63. Take the square root on both sides. So we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 63. This can be simplified because 63 is divisible by the perfect 9, 9 and 7. So x is equal to plus or minus 3 square root of 7. And again, that 3 is coming from the square root of 9 times 7. The square root of 63 is the same as the square root of 9 times 7. And we basically took this and wrote it as 3 square root of 7. So I'm actually going to stop right here, and I'd like you to try a few of them on your own um, and kind of prepare any questions you have for me. We're going to practice this uh, for a good amount of the class period tomorrow to make sure that you get the hang of solving by square roots and knowing how to handle these irrational roots, which these are really the reasons why this is really why we solve by square root or we learn why we have to solve by square root because we realize that now, even though we have some that we would freeze if we had to factor because you're like, how do I even factor this? Um, it's not a difference of squares. Um, now that you have this method in your back pocket, you're able to solve these quadratics that didn't look like difference of, or that look like difference of squares, but weren't difference of squares. But it's just because factoring wasn't the option. It was, it was the wrong technique for that quadratic. So I'm going to stop right here. Try a few of them. Try your hand at a few of them and um, we can check some answers on those. And thanks for watching Solving by Square Root.